Meanwhile, let's have a chat about some of the big stories that have been occurring uh, over the last week. And uh, uh, really, I, I've got to say, stand up for Australia a, a bit uh, tonight, uh, yet again, because, you know, I always talk about our values, I always talk about our traditions, absolutely critical we do it. Senator of Queensland Malcolm Roberts uh, joins us, former Speaker of the House of Representatives Bronwyn Bishops, also joining us, the great Bernie Finn from the Victorian Parliament joins us. Good evening, one and all. Good, Good evening. evening. G'day, Gary. Good to see you. Good to see you. And it's great to, ha great to have each of you on the program. I don't know whether you heard my, my rant at the uh, half past uh, of the hour, you know, the first half hour of the program, but I actually said I think Australia's missed an opportunity uh, to really bring a lot of people together, more recently arrived, as well as those who've got mel multiple generations, when it comes to the Cook 250th. And, mm. well, Senator Roberts, I can't believe some of your Green colleagues, have, well, I can actually, the internationalist Greens don't want Australia to have its own traditions, don't want it to have its own nationhood. I, but the Greens say we're doing too much for Cook. I'm, mere, I'm, I'm not even hearing much of a whisper about the Cook commemoration, Senator. I'm not hearing much either, Gary. In fact, uh, but I do agree with you about the Greens. My, my Greens <laughs> colleagues, as you put them, yes. um, they're anti-human, like <laughs> they're anti-industry, anti they're anti-Australia uh, as well. So they are doing whatever they can to put forward a narrow perspective to get, get their PC votes. That's all they're doing. They're shallow, lack substance, and that's why their, their policy is so bad, because it's ideologically driven not fact-based. Hey, you know, Bronwyn Bishop, I just say this is an opportunity. I've got a lot of friends who have more recently arrived in their own lifetime or maybe their parents' lifetime to Australia and they say they don't know the Cook story. The Age of Enlightenment in the 1770 uh, journey of Cook is now being replaced by an Age of Ignorance uh, 250 years later. Well, that's exactly right, Gary, but we've, we've seen again and again, haven't we, the infiltration of our institutions by socialism which wants to destroy yep. the country as we know it and this is exactly what they're doing and it is necessary that we that we do celebrate what cook did uh, i mean the man's journeys the man's ability uh, was outstanding by whatever measure you use and you know we talk about migrants to this country well uh, my lot came first in 1849 other people have come maybe yep. six days ago or six years ago. Uh, Aboriginal people came 60,000 years ago, but we all came from somewhere else originally. It's just a matter of the timing. <clears throat> so coming together as a nation is what happened when we, uh, in uh, uh, 1901, when we finally federated, we were a whole nation. But that process went on uh, by waves of people coming here and establishing Australia yep. as we know it. And there's no backing away from it, it's fact. And people who are deniers of fact are very dangerous people. And we really have to stand up well, against it. Are. So we need to celebrate what Cook did. Well, I think we have to, I mean, extraordinary being Bernie, NASA got it. They named one of their uh, space shuttles, the Endeavour, because they wanted to yeah, acknowledge yeah. that in an earlier time yeah. when there wasn't uh, satellite navigation, Cook did it by the stars. Mm, he right. did it by yeah, the said, time he was he sailing and did, the measurements yeah. and everything. He got to Tahiti within 36 hours of where when he needed to be there. An extraordinary yeah. journey in the late mm. uh, 1760s. It, it, Just extraordinary. It didn't do him a lot of good, it has to be said, but uh, in the end it's in Tahiti, but uh, he, he was an extraordinary navigator, an extraordinary uh, um, uh, a sailor uh, and somebody who uh, modern Australia owes an enormous amount to and unfortunately you, know, you mentioned the Greens they are just one small part of an international movement which is out to destroy Western civilization uh, and, and that is uh, a simple fact of life. I mean, they, they, they don't hide it. They don't bother hiding it. They, they are out to destroy Western civilization. And an important part of the destruction of Western uh, civilization uh, is, um, is destroying our history, is making sure that kids don't know what happened in Australia before the day before yesterday. Uh, I mean, when I, when I was at school, which is, has to be said, uh, is not just last week, uh, we, we learned about Captain Cook, you know, we, we learned about Van Diemen, we, we learned about yeah. all of these people. Uh, these days, um, you, you don't even, they don't even know who Bob Hawke is. 
Well no. said, Bernie. Well said. But I mean, Malcolm Roberts, the, 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 point, the point here is you've got Sydney University saying that we're no longer British to the bootstraps. Well, I get that. I mean, my, my, my family background is very Anglo-Celtic, although in recent weeks, I've said this, disclosed this before, I found a Nordic thing as well. I've got a bit of Norwegian and Swedish in there, apparently. The Vikings rule, I say. But, you know, I'm part <laughs> Scottish, part English, part Irish, which means I like a drink, want someone else to pay for it. But <laughs> why, why, should we, why should we be afraid of... Why should we be afraid of our Britishness? Well, well, I think we should be proud of our humanness, our humanity. humanity That's what yes. really br brings us all together. And, and making divisions based on colour or, or belief or ideology is just nonsense. We, we should all remember that the civilization we are building here in Australia is unique. But it's, it's combined and it comes out of the Magna Carta and Western civilization, which has its roots in Britain, was further developed in America. They're fundamental. And the Australian Aboriginals have got a, a lot, lot to be grateful for having that civilization come down to this country. So yeah. I think mm. we can get on better if we stop separating people and actually work together. Yeah, I mean, look, I get it, Bronwyn, that there, there's some bad things happen, but you know what? Bad things do happen to good people. And, 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 and I think all of us feel regret based on our 21st century values about the way in which things were done in other, other times. But it shouldn't hold us back. We, we do need to reconcile the mistakes, move on with the future well, as best we can, um, create an Australia we can all be proud of. Well, Kerry, those people who are interested in history will know, of course, if you look back at the history of, of Britain and you look at the invasions of people who came uh, into Britain uh, <laughs> and point. conquered one lot after the other, uh, and then finally look at perhaps the Norman Conquest, which was the most significant perhaps in the end, um, they're pretty much a polyglot oh, no, I like lot. The, I like the Vikings, Brahman. Well, you're, talking, you're talking about my Viking ancestors well, who, you know, I'm, I'm told, sacked Scotland. I'm told... How do you spell that, Gary? <laughs> well, I'm told that uh, my, my maiden name, which is set right, is, is Viking in origin. Uh, whereas my mother's name, go. Congreve, is uh, probably Norman in origin. But the, the sure. bottom lot is it was a polyglot lot and, and each wave mm. was pretty nasty to the lot of people who were there at the time. Um, so in history, yeah. there are nasty things that go on, but we can't run away from them. We've got to look at fact. Now, the fact of the matter is yep. waves of migration have come to Australia and what we've established is a pretty wonderful country. But mm -hmm. we do yeah, have yeah. socialists yep. who have crept in who want to destroy it. And, and, and the others are quite right when they say the Greens, they don't want a nation state. They want world government, for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. But, but right. we had it creep into, yeah. the, into the Liberal Party as well when Malcolm Turnbull crept yep. in. And, you know, Alan Jones uh, yep. uh, ousted him the other day as being, quite frankly, a liar. So we have to be very careful yeah. about what we say is um, the way that this country has been established and that it's worth fighting for. I mean, my father went to war yep. to, to give the gift of freedom to me as his child in World War II. Yeah. So we have to celebrate yeah. these things, not uh, disparage them. And a couple of words of advice for the PM, I think. Let's have some free enterprise here. Stop listening to greenies, climate alarmists, the ABC. Mm. Cut some taxes, get out of things French, get out of the uh, Paris Agreement and the submarines. And start oh, listening, gosh. start listening to people who talk good, solid common sense. Uh, on Sky Prime, well, look, I'm with you. like I'm Paul, with you on that. like you, I'm... like bravo, Chris, bravo. Yeah, yeah. yes, what good people we've got, like Peter Credlin, people who are talking mm. common sense and and putting forward well, it shouldn't be, points that you be... people ca uh, agree with. Well, Bronwyn, it shouldn't be hard. And, Bernie, it reaches a point where of complete frustration. I know you're a, a sitting member in the Liberal Party and, and, and Godspeed to you, my friend, but I think it's time <laughs> that we needed the big national vision. Why aren't we talking about the big project? I keep going back to water, but I do water because water brings yeah. city and country together. It brings yeah, migrant well, and long-standing Australian together. And if we have well, to, think, let's I... borrow some money. Don't worry about anything else. Borrow money. Let's build our confident future. Well, I, th I think we, we're not doing that. We're not having the big vision thing because, uh, quite frankly, we're defending what we've got already. I mean, our, our basic institutions yeah. in this country are under attack in a huge way. Uh, in Victoria here, for example, we used to have a justice system. We don't anymore. It's now a legal system. 
Uh, there's very little justice dispensed. And, and you see that right through the universities, which are, uh, uh, you know, some of the stuff they teach in universities these days, um, I'm, I'm just staggered. I'm just absolutely staggered. Uh, we, we have an education system which is under attack um, in a big way um, from the left. Uh, our, our, even our parliamentary system of government uh, is under attack uh, from the left. So, you know, there is a, there is a big push on uh, from the left uh, right across Australia. Uh, and, and make no mistake, uh, they, they come in various forms, not just uh, what the, the traditional left. Um, let's just look at the, some, of the, some of the people in the New South Wales government uh, and, uh, and you'll see that as well. But, uh, you know, we, we, we have to yeah. uh, consolidate what we believe in, uh, consolidate our foundation uh, before we can, we can really go anywhere. Well, I think so. And unless we invest in this country, and this is where I'm at, if we, if we don't have government offering a big vision, Malcolm Roberts, to invest in the country, to bring people together, you know the way to shut up uh, niggles on the back bench of, of government is to actually say, we're doing this. And everyone will say, yes, let's do that. In, and in between time, they'll just come up with their own little boondoggles and, and foibles and little mm -hmm. distractions. Uh, water is, is, is critical in my view, so is power and getting some clear narratives, but getting a plan going, Malcolm Roberts, is critical. Yeah, I agree with you very much, Gary, because there are three things the government really needs to be responsible for. The first is managing the economy today, cost of living. That interests people. The second thing is security. That's the quality uh, and the risk of living. And the third one is the future. And that involves building a productive capacity that ta will take care of the future generations, the people who aren't born yet as Australians, people who aren't here yet as Australians. And so what we've, ha what we've seen now is a, a, an incredible shift to Canberra. And that has destroyed accountability, whereas we used to have that built into our constitution through competitive federalism. We had an open market between the states. And that was a wonderful thing for all areas of government. We had yep. competition, we had responsibility. That's been destroyed. But what you're absolutely correct, Gary, we need a vision for the whole country. We don't, need to, we don't need to map out all the details now, just so long as what we start building now in the way of infrastructure for the future doesn't impact what could, what could come later on. That's all <clears> we need to do. Just get on with it, as we, as we said privately. Just get on with it, start building the productive capacity of the future. Most of the infrastructure in Australia today, for example, in Sydney, was built in the 1920s and 30s. Yeah. And the Warragamba Dam was finished the year I was born, 1960. So, you know, <laughs> any wonder it's now still not quite capable of handling the kind of load that Sydney is compared to how it was back in the years that uh, I burst forth. Uh, look, uh, Bromman, I, I also think as a Queenslander, I'm very conscious of some of the nonsense that's being peddled. Uh, I'm sure Malcolm Robles will have his view on it as well. But, but I'll, I'll go to you, Bromman. I mean, you've got Paradise Dam. They're now spending money mm -hmm. to try and work out basically how to deconstruct a dam to flush more fresh water out into the ocean as a result of emptying a dam because that was, you know, it was a dodgy job that was built. You've got people who are saying the Great Barrier Reef is bleached and that's from freshwater outflows. By the way, if you built more dams, the freshwater outflows wouldn't be there, but they're saying, oh no, the ocean's bubbling. I, I had a visitor in our house this week from, from Scandinavia, you know, sort of a Viking cousin kind of thing, and, and they said, oh, isn't the Barrier Reef dying? I mean, this, this, this is killing our tourism industry. You want to talk about coronavirus, this sort of green virus is, is buggering up our messaging internationally. Mm. Well, yes, it is. But let me say about the Great Barrier Reef, how many decades now have we had these um, doomsayers saying it's going to be destroyed? And it proves pretty resilient. Yeah. Uh, I think it's been there a long, long time, and I think it's going to stay there a long, long time. But you are, you are right yeah. about uh, the people who, about the non-productive use of our resources. That's, that's what we're really uh, talking about, isn't it? I mean, the, the, mm. the mere thought that you've got a government in Queensland that's going to reduce a dam's capacity uh, is just sheer ineptitude. And if you can't get rid of that government at coming election, Gary, you've really got to work hard up there in, in Queensland to make Don't sure it happens. Don't blame me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't blame you. But, uh, but seriously, there, there are people, of course, who make their reputations and make their money out of making these sorts of predictions. Mm. Uh, how, many, how many people have made money out of trying to say the... Uh, the Great Barrier Reef was in trouble. There, first of all, it was the, the crown of stars. Um, yeah, the crown uh, of thorns, starfish. Crown yeah. of thorns, starfish, yeah. that's it. And then it's uh, yeah. fertiliser coming out or whatever it is. But I think it's a lot more resilient than people's reputation. 
but we have to nonetheless uh, look after our reputation because of uh, our international visitors who come here and assist our economy with their tourism. And I mean, the way we've done, dealt with the bushfires, people really thought that the whole country was aflame. It wasn't. And I now, know. as we're, we're having to say, look, please come and visit because really they're all okay, these, these townships. They need your patronage. The small firms are going bust if you don't. So, you know, it's, it's, we have to be very, very careful and we have to, all of us, do something that is good for our country. Now, well, one of must. the things I'm trying to do at the moment um, is introduce uh, to this country a, a new helicopter, should I say. But it's mm. actually a drone. Uh, which is the size yep. of a small car, which would be enormously useful for fighting bushfires, for border control, for a whole range of things, which is valuable for, for our country. Too, I might say. In indeed, it has so yeah. many uses. But I'm continually on the lookout for things that can be helpful and useful for our country. Yeah, well, look, I think I think we all should be. I mean, Bernie, I'm really mm. in awe of Brahman going into the com chopper discussion in, inadvertently mm. there, but uh, God bless you, Brahman. But I mean, she got it, some guts. It got, yeah, she is. Brahman has brains and vision, and and all we need is about another 20 Brahmans, and uh, we'd be in, yeah, you know, be, undefeated good, on every on every battle. But 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 Bernie, getting Australians out. I mean, we've got to go to Victorian countryside. We've got to, go to New South Wales mm. countryside. Mm. We've got to go to the the far north to spend money on tourism. Every word that's uttered about Australia in the international gaze affects every Australian because our reputation is being sullied, hell west and yep. crooked right now by the international left. Well, can I tell you that uh, a couple of weeks ago, the entire Liberal National Party here in Victoria, the state uh, parliamentary parties, uh, went to uh, Wodonga, stayed in Wodonga, had our, our annual conference there. Uh, we went to the uh, Talangata Footy Club, uh, where we, uh, we, we bought our own booze and paid for our own meat. Uh, and uh, we, we met a lot of people who'd been fighting fires. Up until that morning, it was, in fact, the local, the local centre for the, the fire relief effort. Uh, and we met a lot of, a lot of the, the locals, uh, the, the mayors and, and people who'd been been out fighting the fires, so it was quite an extraordinary experience for those of us, uh, particularly uh, from the city. Uh, Bill Tilley, the local member up there, he'd been actually out fighting the fires himself, uh, and he's, he's, a, he's just a great yeah. local member up in um, up in Wodonga and around Benambra. He's, a, he's uh, an ex copper. But, you know, he's a good guy, Bill Tilley. He is. He's a top bloke. He is a top bloke, Bill. Um, but you know we, what yeah. we what we uh, what we are missing, as you say, is vision. I mean, we have got a premier here in Victoria uh, who said we're not going to build any more dams because it's not going to rain anymore. I mean, we haven't heard that since... Yeah. We, we haven't heard that since Sandbags Flannery said that a few years back. And, you know, and we call him yeah. Sandbags because every time he says it's not going to rain, we get floods. Uh, I mean, the, 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 you know, these, yeah. these people have got no idea. I mean, I was caught in a, in a major downpour here in Melbourne uh, the other day. And if, if Daniel Andrews had yeah. been around, he would have been very, very welcome to join me. You know, th these people just make it up as yeah. they go along. They do. That, that's, uh, well, I do. I, I've just about had a gut full of them, to tell you the truth. Well, I, can, can I well, say... Well, I've um, had a gut full too, but, 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 but I just want to get a comment from Malcolm Roberts from before mm. I go to a quick break, just about the Paradise Dam and, and, and the Barrier Reef. Tell us why we've got to go to the reef, Senator. Well, the reef... Let, let me just remind everyone of something that happened in 2008. In June of 2008, South East Queensland and North Queensland and the Territory had record cold temperatures and the reef bleached in Southern <laughs> Barrier Reef. The reef bleached because bleaching is an entirely natural event, entirely natural due to extremes in temperature, entirely natural. And the, and the, uh, the uh, what is it, the uh, algae that live in, in conjunction with the coral have the symbiotic relationship and the coral and the algae dies and it gets tossed out and the, and the, and the coral bleaches. And it comes back. We, we, went, we took the media to a, a place in central Queensland in 2016, just uh, off uh, Keppel Island. And it had been bleached three years before. It was thriving. Yeah. The, the reef is fine. And we've got to stop telling these lies about climate because it's destroying our economy. So, so what you're saying is something called nature may overpower the so-called man-made intervention in nature when it's all... When it all Absolutely is, correct. Is, put, is put to work. All right, we're going to take a break. I want to come back talk about coronavirus and indeed a few of the other economic impacts occurring in Australia right now. More in just a moment. You're watching Hardgrave on Sky News Live. 
discover. There are really inspiring people out there doing fabulous things. The unexpected. So are you a party animal? What's the real Peter Dutton like? Uh, it's Elvis on the phone. He's saying, I love your music. You make me feel like dancing. Wow. Every week, new faces. You must have felt quite hurt by what you saw. Rushed to hospital. It was just outrageous. New stories. <laughs> that helps everybody. That's what life should be about. Brand new Chris Smith and Friends. Always a pleasure, Chris. 10 p.m. Sundays. Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi award winning wealth manager, returning 4.9% on a 12 month investment. Make your money work harder for you. Call 138010. Mm. Mr. Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> Callum Murray. Callum Murray. Callum Murray. <laughs> Let's make a jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee. Make millionaires jealous when you win a $2.8 million lifestyle choice. Choose between an inner city Sydney apartment or $2.8 million in gold. Buy a $5 ticket at rslartunion.com.au. For a limited time only at your local designer appliances, receive a bonus beef eater bug barbecue or Vintech wine fridge when you purchase selected Electrolux products. Visit your local gallery or browse online today. Today, your information is more exposed than ever. When you shop, sign in or browse, you could be vulnerable to cyber criminals. More online threats demand more protection. That's why new Norton 360 provides multiple layers of protection, combining device security, secure VPN, password manager, and cloud backup, all in one solution. Get new Norton 360, starting at $79.99 for the first year. Terms apply. Muscle pain, neck pain, back pain. Fight pain on two fronts with misinophen. Paracetamol plus ibuprofen. Dual action pain relief starts to be absorbed in just five minutes. Misinophen provides up to eight hours pain relief in a single tablet. Say no to pain. Misinophen. Floors and windows, Carpacol have got you covered. Did you know our quality luxury vinyl plank is only $22 per metre every day? Introducing our new range of Australian made roll of lines. Made to order, competitively priced, with a quick turnaround. And take a look at these stunning plantation shutters too. And take 50% off the price of rugs at carpacol.com.au. At Carpacol, we've got you covered. The experts in the trade. Once, I saved three billion lives. You chose to change the future. I'll be back. Do you believe in fate, Sarah? Terminator Dark Fate. Rented now in Foxtel Store. Well, no, you Ro can't, Rowan. You cannot say that. Ro Rowan, really, seriously. I can't believe you just said Crossing that. Crossing lines. Help! Gagged. Never. Outsiders. Can I say that? No! Oh. Welcome back to Hard Grave. Gee, it's great to have your company. And I'm in conversation with three great Australians. Bronwyn Bishop, former Speaker of the House of Representatives. Bernie Finn, the immortal member in the Victorian Upper House. And Senator Malcolm <laughs> Roberts from One Nation Party here in Queensland. He's fought a few fights and he's come straight through them all. So it's great to have each of you uh, on the panel tonight. Uh, coronavirus, the impact of that. I spoke earlier tonight to some leaders of the Chinese community here in Queensland. But uh, Bernie, it's pretty obvious that there are problems for the Chinese community everywhere. The ban's been extended. Uh, we talked a lot last week about the fact that we seem to have all of our eggs, if you like, into the, the one basket as far as our exports are concerned, our education mm. And, mm. And, and other things. Uh, but uh, there are people profiteering in this space as well. So we've got to kind of balance here, haven't we? we? I think we all should just go out to Chinese restaurants. I think that's a given. If that helps, if that oh, makes Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, let me, and, um, and, and let me tell you, Gary, if you want to come to Melbourne at the moment, uh, Little Burke Street, Chinatown, yeah. uh, is ripe for the picking yes. because there's a lot of restaurants. I walk through there quite often and a lot of restaurants are empty. And I, and I mean literally empty. 
uh, and it's a tragedy because it is just one of the most delightful uh, parts of Australia. I think probably the premium uh, restaurant area of the nation. Uh, and and these restaurants, I know one of my, my one of my favourite restaurants has just closed. Uh, it's, it's just tragic. People have to get out and uh, uh, enjoy what they've always enjoyed. You know, there is no threat uh, here in Melbourne or in Sydney or in, in Brisbane or no. wherever uh, or to people uh, dining no. on, on the Chinese tucker. And, of course, you're talking about Shark Fin House, no doubt, because it's yeah. like everyone's favourite uh, restaurant. And, uh, and I understand uh, Shark, in, in Shark Fin Inn may, may be in strife too. Oh, Lord. It's, it's, it's mm. awful to think about. But, Bromwell, I look at the people, and, and I'm all for, for market forces, but the fact that, that some people have over-profiteered on the masks and stuff a few weeks ago, I think the edge has gone off it. Uh, there are some people going to test this with the ACCC. I don't know whether it's going to go anywhere because I think we just might waste too much time dealing with something that happened <laughs> some weeks ago. Um, what do you think? Well, Gary, I walked into my local Mitre 10 store the other day and they were telling me how somebody had come in and bought a thousand masks and then was coming mm. back to buy another and their stocks were being depleted. And really what they were wow. thinking and what I was thinking and others think is that they're being bought here and sent to China. Uh, and this just yeah. shows again how mismanaged uh, the Communist Party is in China. Mm. I feel so yeah. sorry for the Chinese people because they have to suffer under this ghastly form of communism which is imposed upon them. You know, up to what? Mm. 100 million people are locked down in 10 cities and they tell us that, what, um, 1,000 people have died or even 2,000 people have died? Mm. Um, they haven't closed the border into Hong Kong. I guess uh, there are some who suggest, and it can be a good... I, I per perfectly believe it. Uh, that uh, they could be putting the virus into the demonstrators in Hong Kong. That's one way to take care of them. It, it's just there is no truth coming out. Uh, and so it just reminds us uh, when, with the escalation in the price of those masks, I'm sure many of them are being sent across because socialism is so incompetent. It just can't mm. run. And then there's yeah. the evil side of it. Uh, if you recall, um, Stalin starved 10 million to death. Uh, to get rid of them, and yeah. Nazi Tung in the Great Leap Forward, 40 million were starved to death. What is happening? What is happening to these people, for whom I feel desperately, and, and desperately course, sorry? And last half hour, we talked to some leaders of the Chinese community in Brisbane who said that a lot of the older Chinese uh, community members are getting their news first from their traditional language, their old language, rather than the language here. So part of the battle here is to try and get uh, the word out. Then you've got stories such as universities telling people, look, you know, pay $1,500 and s let's slip around the visa system, Malcolm Roberts. I mean, uh, this is, in itself does not help the, 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 pardon the pun, the PR for the PRC people coming here to Australia. No, you're absolutely right. The, the, the universities are on easy street, they think, by I think 43% yeah. of the students, uh, foreign students, are now Chinese, so yeah. they've become too dependent. But there is, I want to uh, pass a compliment on to the federal government because it took action to close our borders very quickly. Now, it seemed like that the, the uh, epidemic wouldn't be as strong or as vir virulent, is that the word, Bronwyn? Virulent, but, yes. Uh, yes. Virulent, but yes. Um, and it's, in, it's indicating now that there are around about 2,000 deaths from the coronavirus in China. Most of them are in China, only, only a few outside. And the, the, the level of um, uh, what, severity of these diseases is fairly low. In fact, uh, a lady who our family knows who has been very strong in, in uh, researching into uh, vaccines in this country on other diseases, she said that the severity of the coronavirus is much less than ordinary influenza. Mm. Having said that, that doesn't mean we shouldn't address it, and I think the government has addressed it really well, but now we need to be sensible about that too and make sure the news comes out because the figures are not as bad as people initially thought. Yeah. So we have to be careful that we don't overreact from here on. But I guess we don't the problem know. is we just don't know, and again, well, mm. that's exactly. the trouble. We don't know, and of course, talking to and, those uh, terrific uh, trouble thing in Daniel last half hour, uh, and uh, very true, uh, but th there's reasons to not trust it. You know, they they were saying mm. that uh, uh, they were optimistic that things would would start 
to, to become more confident here in Australia. But One um, of the things, though, Gary, you know, is that um, people who die from this tend to be people who are already uh, yeah, under, yeah. under the weather from something else yeah. or are elderly. And, and fit and healthy people um, are not we, being uh, decimated at all. We, all right. we don't, the problem let's, is let's we, we, know. Just, uh, yeah. we don't know that we, at all. We don't know what is happening. And if you go um, right back to the uh, philosophical beginning of uh, social, socialism with George Bernard Shaw, you had mm. to justify your existence, and if not, you had to be eliminated kindly. Yep. Yep. Is this That's a method of eliminating well, people socialists... who are no longer useful to an ageing mm. population mm. in China? There are many questions. You don't lock down 100 million people in 10 cities and then say 2,000 people died. They're being locked the up in their problem, houses. Gary... It just doesn't make sense. The major well, problem, Gary, is we can't believe a word we'll, the Chinese we'll government ever... says. I, I was going to say, I don't think whether we'll actually ever get the answer to it, but we will keep asking the questions. Now, I've got a lovely segue, as they say, so I'm going to transition from mm. one subject to another because, you know, I love the story this week where Anthony Albanese was in <laughs> a conversation in a Chinese restaurant in Chinatown in <laughs> Sydney uh, dealing with the fact that a member of the Labor Party who has since um, gone to jail and all sorts of other things um, wanted to be re-endorsed because he wanted to go to the Beijing Olympics. Now, there you go. I've just managed to do all of that in one fell swoop. <laughs> now, let's talk about Anthony Albanese. And after everything we talked about, after everything we've talked about this hour, Bernie Finn, why on earth would you announce a 2050 zero emissions mm. target as a serious policy and have your environment spokesperson, or whatever she is, Penny Wong, saying, if we don't act on climate change, the cost is going to be 20 times worse than the cost. Why doesn't uh, she just simply say 100,000 times worse? We're, we're, we're all going to die. We're all worse. going to die. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly. Yeah, that, uh, well, 20 times nothing is still nothing. Yeah, yeah. These people don't want to win. <laughs> they, they, just, they just don't want to win. You know, let them go. I was delighted when I heard that. You know, they lost the, the climate change election last year. Uh, and they are intent on doing it again next time. If Look, if they've got a death wish, don't get in their way. Well, Let quite, them go. Quite frankly, I think uh, Albo is the government's best asset. So let's look mm. after him. Yep, no, he's doing, uh, he's I mean, doing a great but job. In all si but this, this, <laughs> this climate change scam, I'm going to talk about it a fair bit tonight on a variety of topics this hour and next hour. I mean, Malcolm Roberts, I know that you have some strong views on it. I would share just about every one of them, I reckon. But I, I think, uh, who has whispered into Albo's ear saying, hey, I've got a great idea. Why don't you just say zero emissions? <laughs> How do you do zero emissions? How do you do that? How big a power cord have you got to plug into New Zealand or something? What are we going to do here? Well, it's absolute <laughs> nonsense. And, and Albo has gone crazy again. He, as, as Bernie correctly said, he, the Labor Party lost the unlosable election yeah. based upon uncosted policies. And Albanese's done it again. He's fallen for the same thing. Albanese Albanese is now being called Shorten 2.0. That's it. And, and that'll be it for the Labor Party as well. But we've got to also hold the Liberals accountable here because um, the Liberals today, I saw a, a tweet from the Liberals saying Albanese has got a 2050 target but is doing nothing for 2030. Well, the Liberals, why should they be crowing about doing something 2030 mm -hmm. when there's no need to do it? The chief scientist himself, and I know your views on this, uh, Bernie, very strong and I appreciate them and applaud them. And Bronwyn, I think I know where you are on this too. But the, the Liberal Party has come up with a target for 2030 and yet the chief minister... The chief, min sorry, the chief scientist has said that if we eliminate all production of carbon dioxide from humans on this planet, in Australia, there will be virtually nothing in the way yep. of an impact yep. on climate. Yep. Virtually nothing. So we yep. are destroying Even our Bay economy. Even said our that. Our competitors are loving it. Well, well, yeah, but I wouldn't cite him. But that's, ex uh, but that's exactly well, why his, I say... His Tom, Foolery's, Tom Foolery's brother, Tim Foolery, I think is his name. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I mean, Roman, let's face it. What's going to happen here is Albo's been set up and, and somebody's going to give Albo the elbow is what I think is going to happen over this. This is a, this is a farcical promise. This is like saying, um, well, everything they said in the last federal election. Now, I mean, look, here's a little bit of what Anthony Albanese has had to, to say today. So I'll give him a chance to make his own words heard on this program. Here's Albo. Today, I announced that a Labor government will adopt the carbon neutral target of zero net emissions by the year 2050. Oh, 
Now, this should be as non-controversial in Australia as it is in most nations. I, I do. mean, net carbon emissions, what does that mean, Bronwyn? Is he going to plant a lot of trees? Mm. I mean, I'm happy to go and help him plant some trees. That sounds like direct action, well, Mark. Well, the, the first thing I'd say is I do wish he'd learn to say Australia. That would be a good start. <laughs> then you could love it some more. But the second, the, the most important thing is this. He is stating that uh, we have a problem that we have to lower our standard of living to meet his wish list. He'll go after our electricity. We've already seen how fragile in New South Wales our electricity system is. Uh, with the storms we've had and in Victoria. Um, we, the system is literally being rationed so that we don't get brownouts like you get in third countries. He'll come after that, then they'll come after our pets because they're uh, putting out emissions and then after livestock because agriculture makes up mm. such a large percentage uh, of... Uh, our carbon emissions, then he'll come after human beings, I guess, because we're doing a bit too. I mean, the whole thing is just a nonsense and we have to hold the ground so that people, I think, more and more see through it. Gary, but, but, can but, I make but, a... But, 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 sorry, Senator, I was just going to say, Bronwyn, but you be gentle when I ask you this, right? How is it that members of the Government Party, the Liberal Party in particular, are not actually rising up and saying, you know what, we want to be different to this because we're actually uh, calling this a straw man. We're calling bulltish, as they say in polite media, on this. <laughs> we don't agree with this, Albo. And so this is it. This is what we're going to do. Instead, we're going to make our best use of our best resources and indeed return ourselves to the competitive environment we used to have of cheap uh, electricity. We've just seen the car industry cop cop this mm. enormous king hit with Holden mm. finally dying mm. off the back of high electricity prices and the production of parts, I would submit, amongst everything else. Uh, you know, I mean, Brian, it just makes no sense to me that even the government parties are going along with this. Well, it, it, it is a very worrying small group of people in the government ranks um, who really perhaps uh, have found themselves in the wrong party on, on this issue. Uh, and they try and stir up trouble... Um, I think they like to call themselves modern liberals or something or other. Mm, um, mm, but the fact of the matter... I saw that the other day. Yeah. It, what the heck it, does that it, mean? Well, it, it's, it's trying to make uh, this uh, um, little group of people have more influence by using the word modern, implying that anyone who's not with them, of course, is not. Or perhaps, mm. perhaps we've got to oh, the okay. postmodernism system with regard to these people, and they're the ones <laughs> who are behind. If, I, if that's what to, modernism is, thank you, them, you can keep it. I prefer to call them um, deniers of baseload, baseload deniers. Yeah. And, I, and I think they are promoters of uh, unreliable power, they're promoters of destroying our way of life and they have to be resisted. Now the sensible Absolutely. people of Australia, when they're faced with a choice uh, at the electoral bo ballot box, they reject it, which is exactly mm. what they did to Shorten. Because yeah. they can see through and, and, and they will keep re And they will keep rejecting it. I mean, Malcolm Roberts, the point, the point here is it's really simple, and we'll talk a bit more about it after the break, but I believe that old-style Labor voters are not very happy with this sort of an announcement today. Plenty of people I know who earned a living off the tools, who earned a living with the sweat of their brow, who, whose parents earned that sort of living in that same way, understand this is, as I said, in a polite form, bulltish, total well, bulltish. Gary, you're absolutely correct. Trump is taking the traditional democratic core voter, the workers. He's taking the African-Americans. Boris Johnson is taking now the, the blue-collar worker in Britain. That's fact. The Labor Party has abandoned. The Democrats in America have abandoned them. And what mm. we're seeing in Australia is that the, the blue-collar worker is abandoning the Labor Party because the Labor Party has abandoned the blue-collar worker. But the Liberals are not taking in the blue-collar workers because the Liberals are also coming up with this nonsense. Let me give you an example. Every day there are thousands of people who vote with their wallets in favour of, against this nonsense that the Labor Party and the Liberal Party are pushing. They buy a car. And well, more correctly, they buy an SUV. 
And the traditional sedan, like the Honda Civic, the Toyota Corolla, has got a counterpart in the Honda CRV, which is an SUV, and the, and the Toyota RAV4. Yeah. Now, people are avoiding the sedans like the Civics and the Corollas and the Mazdas, and they're going to the, the SUV equivalent, which produces more carbon dioxide and chews more fuel. They're saying every day, go to hell. We don't pay any attention to this nonsense. And I also remind the Liberal Party and the Labor Party that they have lost eight leaders over this issue. And, it, and it's not mm. going away mm. because the people know this is the stuff that comes out of the southbound, uh, south end of a northbound bull. I, That's it. I, I think it is. <laughs> so look, we'll take a break. I want to come back because there is international research that shows what Senator Roberts just said. To be correct, more in just a moment. This is Hardgrave on Australia's news channel. A lot of tantalising things that go in various directions. She broke this relationship off some months before the flight. Its official report referred to the potential of a third party. It's game over. We know where it is. MH370, like you've never seen it before. Sometimes it's convenient to turn your back on something, as far as government's concerned. What are you referring to there? An encore screen, parts one and two, Saturday, 8 p.m. The Navara runout is now on at Nissan. Save thousands on selected Navara models, like the ST 4x4 dual cab manual, now from only $39,990 drive away for ABN buyers, only at Nissan. Floors and windows, Carpacol have got you covered. Did you know our quality luxury vinyl plank is only $22 per metre every day? Introducing our new range of Australian made roller blinds. Made to order, competitively priced, with a quick turnaround. And take a look at these stunning plantation shutters too. And take 50% off the price of rugs at carpacol.com.au. At Carpacol, we've got you covered. The experts in the trade. It's because I love you. Ali, what Not are you doing? Because we're far apart. It's because I love you. And because you're near my heart. Do what you want to do, be what you want to be. Muscle pain, neck pain, back pain. Fight pain on two fronts with mesinophen. Paracetamol plus ibuprofen. Dual action pain relief starts to be absorbed in just five minutes. Mesinophen provides up to eight hours pain relief in a single tablet. Say no to pain. Mesinophen. This is your growing business, and it's only going to get better because Tyro is here with an app that goes alongside your Tyro F Plus, plus a fee-free bank account that earns you interest while you're on the go. Tyro, better business banking. Mr Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> Callum Murray. Callum Murray. <laughs> Callum Murray. <laughs> well, let's make it Jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee. The Navara runout is now on at Nissan. Save thousands on selected Navara models, like the ST 4x4 dual cab manual, now from only $39,990 drive away for ABN buyers, only at Nissan. Sky News Australia delivers real news and honest views. A rational discussion. It does open the Pandora's box. Did you need a second, third or fourth opinion? This debate won't go away. If you can't stand the heat, then get out of the kitchen. That's an incredible statement that you make. A new show with new views every week. In my view, 8pm Sundays. Welcome back to Hard Grave. Thanks so much for your company. I hope you have a great weekend as well, no matter where you are. We've still got another hour or more of the program to go. But we're talking with solid citizens like Bernie Finn from the Victorian Parliament, Roman Bishop and Senator Malcolm Roberts. Interesting that Climatism blog last year pointed to the fact that the silent majority of people, if you like the quiet Australians, the quiet Britons, the quiet Americans, uh, well, it proves what I've always said, that is you can trust the people. They have stared down 
all of this climate change malarkey, Bernie Finn, and they have said, mm. you know mm. what, you can go to an election, you can promise all of this sort of stuff, but we can, in fact, work it out. We, we know that we don't want dirty creeks and waterways and we want to plant trees and all this sort of stuff. Yep. But if you yep. start racking up our electricity bills to pay for some sort of leftist agenda, we're going we're gonna to vote you out. That's, that's pretty yep. loud. Uh it is ab absolutely right, uh, absolutely right, Gary. And, and, you know, the thing is, the left know that they've lost the workers. The left knows that, that they've lost the, uh, the, the quiet Australians, if you will, and they're now attacking the kids. And when I see children crying in the streets because they think they're going to die on Tuesday week because of this climate change crap, it infuriates me. It absolutely infuriates me. This is the most insidious and evil form of child abuse imaginable because you are taking away from those kids hope. You're taking away from those kids any future that they may want. Uh, and to, to do that to children, to innocent children, um, who um, we, we have a responsibility to look after, uh, I think is just the lowest form of, of, of human activity that, that I can think of. Uh, it, it is just despicable. It is totally despicable. And it's happening all over Australia. It's happening all over the world. And, uh, and these kids are being fed this stuff. They're believing it. And they are living in terror. They are living in terror. Uh, and, you know, I, I yeah. think we responsible adults have a responsibility to, to step in and stop it. Yeah, I think parents parents need to, to, to measure up and have the conversation. Things are not as bad as they are reading on tweets and on social media. And frankly, uh, they're hearing in the classrooms. I mean, they won't tell well, kids well, Gary, about James is, Corp, but they'll no... tell them all about the fact that we're all going to yeah. die or something. Nonsense. There is no climate emergency. Let's face facts. There is no, no climate <laughs> emergency. It doesn't exist. No, as I said, the age of ignorance, the age of ignorance. I want to move on to the American election because it's still happening there. And, the, and it seems that if the Democrats get up, they'll go all hyper green and internationalist as well. I think that mm. in itself, Bronwyn, spells doom for the Democrat uh, candidates. We're seeing a lot of the argy barge uh, and so forth around Michael Bloomberg. Uh, boy, did Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders uh, <laughs> really hoe into them? Uh, it's like the race to the left is going on. But here's, here's a little bit of the pile on, on Michael Bloomberg. Have a listen. In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg had policies in New York City of stop and frisk which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. That is not a way you're going to grow voter turnout. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> Democrats are not going to win if we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns. We shouldn't have to choose between one candidate who wants to burn this party down and another candidate who wants to buy this party out. Uh, Bronwyn, that is a pylon and a half. And, of course, there's also, you know, other reports that show that Michael Bloomberg is uh, number one in the list of the 45 most dangerous people in the world. So, uh, you know, a, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, the, the, the Democrat pylon is based around saying I'm more left than him. I mean, it's a mess that America is going through this, isn't it? He's allegedly spent $340 million on advertising. It's a pity he couldn't find a few dollars to spend bringing him up to speed on what he might be attacked on. I th <laughs> it was just the most crass uh, piece of a presentation I think I've seen in politics in a long, long time. But the fact of the matter is that the election in America is now all about socialism. Now, I'm, I'm the one who uh, really exposed socialism in this country, and now everyone talks about it. Dare I think it crossed the yeah. waters to the United States? Because that's what they're now focusing on, that the Democrats are putting up socialist leaders who will take it down the communist road. And that's going to get stronger and stronger as it goes on. So what the Democrats yeah, decide uh, when they get to their convention is going to be very interesting to watch, because the... Um, the diehards are going to say, or some of them are going to say, that they want Bloomberg because he's got the money. 
uh, and the rest of the party, which has gone way, way to the left, is going to push like blazes for Saunders. So um, it, it, it's just a um, just a, a, an interesting thing to watch the, how far the Democrats have gone to the left uh, and how socialism has impregnated itself into the Democrats part, Democratic mm, Party. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. going to bring the popcorn, Malcolm Roberts. Uh, you know, give me a minute, your take on the American election. I mean, we, none of us know where it's going to land, but uh, I would have thought Americans would be scared by this sort of rubbish. Yes, I, I'm married to an American wife, and I've lived and worked in America and I've, uh, for five years, and I've uh, studied over there, and I've also travelled through all 50 states. An amazing country. Americans are very down-to-earth. When yeah. you cut through all the, the, the BS on their, their media, Americans are down to earth. They won't fall for this nonsense. Um, and what's more, the Democrats are now showing they're so out of touch with reality. They're, they're madly trying to outdo each other. And Trump must be laughing. He's got, a, yeah. he's got the biggest uh, Republican vote amongst African Americans ever. He's got a, a big... Uh, following amongst workers, blue-collar workers in America. He's very strong there. He's taken a lot of the Democratic heartlands away. He must be just laughing. Well, I... but, but there is one thing I just wanted to say. Yeah. If America ever falls for this crap, we're in serious trouble. Yeah, James are. Inhofe, who's a senator for Oklahoma, he was about to vote in favour of a carbon tax, along with many of the other senators back uh, in the 2000s. And he suddenly woke up, thanks to Mark Morano on his staff. James Inhofe did his work. He realised it was a, a glo the climate change nonsense is being pushed by unelected socialist bureaucrats like Morris Strong, Christiana Figueres. And what he did was he rallied the whole Senate. The Senate voted down that carbon well, tax. Otherwise, we would, have been, we would be having global socialism right now. One man changed the course of history because he went off the data. Well, one person can make a difference. Bromwood Bishop, you mm -hmm. always make a difference. We'll see you back again next week. Bernie Finn, stay safe down there in Victoria. I hope the power stays on for you. For, uh, uh, thank you, know, you Gary. Good day. Thank Gary, good to see you. Senator Malcolm Roberts as well. For those watching Sky on Wynn, thanks for your company. Paul Murray will be back with you Sunday night. Uh, and we'll be back after this short break for everyone on the Foxtel Network.